that Europe is better than Africa is something that was put in your head by Europeans. But it's Africa has everything. Africa is super rich culturally, language wise, food, resources. Everything is in Africa. Africans only need to take back control of their continent. I'm a king. Welcome back to the African Narrative Podcast. We are at the Sphinx Festival in Belgium, and we just freestyling today, talking about everything, but mainly focusing on Africa. I'm Sarah. I I come from Italy, and I've been living in Belgium for the past six years. I ended up here for my studies, and then yeah, I ended up staying a bit longer. <laughs> Um, I kind of feel home here, although I feel at home everywhere in the world. She's traveled a lot and also traveled widely in Africa. So, as a European going to Africa, what was the first thing that you came to Africa and said like, whoa, this is totally, I didn't expect this. All right. Um, wow, that, that's, that's a good question because actually, I kind of had in my head like an idea of Africa and there was there were a lot of things that I expected but of course one thing is to see things in documentaries and on TV and one thing is to see them with your own eyes um, yeah I was to be honest surprised by the strength of the people everyone is, is super strong everyone is yeah always busy 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 um, in their daily life, never stopping, always going on, always smiling, even though the conditions are not luxurious. That's something that, yeah, really stayed with me a lot. And the vitality of people. And what about the culture shock? Because like you said, you could have been prepared with the documentaries and everything, but still you are there. Uh, you are right at the airport. I'm sure that is not... I did, ev I did almost everything by bus, hitchhiking and public transport. Okay. <laughs> so I was a lot of times in these very little local buses full of, of people with things on top. Um, and I, I think like I had more of a cultural shock when I came back here. <laughs> I kind of adapted quite easily in Africa. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was a big cultural shock to come back here and hear people complaining about nothing all the time uh, when yeah, most of people here live in luxury, having more things than they need. And I adapted quite a lot to the local habits in Africa because I stayed a lot with locals and I traveled as a local. Um, and I had everything I needed. I had, when I had a place to sleep for the night, I had some food, I had water. From people you already knew or how? No. Sometimes oh, I just... You're talking, you stayed at an hotel, but you said you stayed No, 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 I never local. stayed in hotels. I always stayed with locals or I was camping with my tent. Um, sometimes I just met people on the streets, I started talking and they just invited me at home. Camping is a most European thing ever. You, have, you go to Africa, you take a tent to camp, to sleep somewhere outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did that. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> uh, did you meet any African person camping? No. No, I was I was all the time alone. I was in Guinea-Bissau on the island on this like desert beach all by myself. No locals. A young white girl traveling alone in Africa, which is dangerous, which is primitive, which is everything that is bad. Yeah, that's what people wanted to believe. I mean, I never felt, I never felt unsafe, to be honest. Okay, I, I don't do like stupid things, you know, like I don't go alone at night walking in the middle of like a capital, for example, in but a neighborhood. But you wouldn't do that probably either in Europe. You yeah, know? exactly. Like, you know, I, I try to think about like what can be a danger and I just don't, you know engage in, in certain situations. So uh, what, what motivated you to want to see those places? Which countries have you been to? 
Uh, so I started in Morocco and then I went down hitchhiking through Mauritania, Senegal, Gambia, Guinea-Bissau, then I went back up. Then I took a flight to Burkina and then I did like Togo and Ghana. How long did it take? Six months. And why would a young white girl want to go spend six months in Africa? Um, I am drawn by like less touristic places, like places that are still like intact culturally, where I can have the cultural shock of shock. For me, it was not a shock. It was a pleasure to get to know the cultures and see something that is still authentic. Uh, I love the music. <laughs> I love West African music. Um, actually. One of the things, one of the reasons I went there to Senegal and Gambia was to take Kora lessons. Mm. I took like two weeks of Kora lessons and then I thought, I don't know, it's not my instrument. Mm. I, I started playing the djembe. Ah, okay. And then I stayed three weeks in, uh, in Waga, in Burkina, yeah. and took three weeks of djembe lessons. So, yeah, music was a big, big, big reason. I, I jammed with like people along the way. My my jamba teacher also brought me to a marriage to play with him. Wow. <laughs> I made some money. People gave me five hundred sefa. I was uh, like, whoa! How, how, did they, how did they give you the money? Yeah, it was just playing. They just give it to you, or they put it uh -huh. yeah in your in your hat if you have a hat, or they just <laughs> leave it on the ground. I felt like almost embarrassed, and my teacher was like, no, 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 take the money, take the money. You're playing. I was like, okay, okay. When you need blogger in Africa. You will know that's part of the culture and tradition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know, yeah. it's just people showing appreciation yeah. of something. I think it's very nice. You don't need to be embarrassed about it. It's just part of the whole. Yeah, it's just because thing. I'm white, you know. You just talk about whiteness. Yeah. And about the community, about people, how we yeah. relate to each other. So when you arrived in those countries and you went to those local people yeah. and you are a white person how did they receive you so i think it was a bit different in uh, in the countries uh, but yeah most of the times a white woman you're like uh, literally like the most tiring place was senegal mm -hmm. Like all the guys, all the guys, you cannot walk for one meter. <laughs> There's suddenly someone next to you. And then, yeah, you're an angel, you know, we all want to come to Europe. I was like, yeah, I know. Senegal was sometimes a bit too much. As a white person, you're never invisible. So everyone is always staring at you, which I already knew from the beginning. Um, but, you know, I was prepared uh, for that. And uh, I think it's also normal. Uh, the kids are always approaching you like Tubab, Tubab, <laughs> Broni <laughs> in Ghana. But you know, like kids, it doesn't disturb me a lot. But in Ghana, for example, sometimes it was quite disturbing because it was also adult people. Mm -hmm. And that I think it was also the difference. I noticed the difference in like countries that were colonized by Britain mm -hmm. and countries that were colonized by France. That was also a very different approach to white people. I didn't see a lot of white people, of course. Most of the times I was the only one. Uh, also because white tourists, they tend to go to hotels and they tend to go to touristic places while I tried to... I was not interested in going to museums. I wanted to stay with locals. And they always... I mean, people were always really friendly, yeah. um, always welcoming, always offering food, even if they were really poor. And that's why I was asking, as a white person going there, do you see people who probably don't have a lot of luxury, yeah. but you come to their home, you have they to They welcome eat. you, yeah, 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 yeah. all and the time. People who are in Europe who have a lot of money, yeah. but they are conditioned to be like, Oh, it's this five o'clock. We are eating. Oh, why yeah, did you yeah, come yeah, 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 so yeah, 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 yeah,
And that's why I told you when I came here, I had a cultural shock because I was used for six months to always be welcomed by people. And I arrived here, I was in the streets, suddenly was full of people and I felt invisible alone. and alone. And yeah, so it was really, yeah, difficult. Yeah. First month I was like a bit <laughs> in shock, more than when I went to Africa. The thing about Africa is, and of course, because of your color, people will see you immediately. Yeah. But <laughs> even people who are of the black color, we might not always do the right thing, but people acknowledge you. You are, you know, the thing yeah. about Ubuntu. Yeah. You are, I am because we are. Yeah, that yeah, is yeah, the yeah, whole yeah, of yeah, the yeah. community. Thing. And here is more like individualistic. Yeah. But my question is, is one better than the other? No, of course not. Of course not. That's also like something I, I had this conversation with a lot of people because of course, all the people I met, either they tried to go on a boat, they knew someone that went on a boat and arrived safe in Europe, they knew someone that didn't arrive safe in Europe. And I was like, that Europe is better than Africa is something that was put in your head by Europeans. But it's, Africa has everything. Africa is super rich culturally, language-wise, food, resources. Everything is in Africa. Africans only need to take back control of their continent. I mean, you see some countries now trying to, you know, break the, the ties with France, for example, Burkina, Mali, Niger. They're all starting little by little. New elections in Senegal this year. So hopefully, little by little, they will start gaining control, but now like Russia and China are coming back in, so it's, it's very tricky. And also, yeah, I mean, there's so many corrupt politicians, but not only in Africa, but like, oh, we have really corrupt politicians, like, well, in Europe we have them too. I mean... I actually think there are more... Uh, more corruption in Europe than in Africa, but yeah, that's a yeah, different yeah. topic. I don't want to say that, but you know, <laughs> I mean, it's it's just everywhere. So uh, sometimes you, yeah, you really have to hope that some politicians are good. Um, very tricky, very tricky. But I hope, I really, I have big, big hopes that things are gonna change. Uh, also because. I don't know, I felt also guilty many times. Uh, I also met a girl from the Netherlands, she was also traveling, we met in Mauritania and then we met in Senegal and in Gambia, so we came across each other several times and we had this discussion several times that we were always feeling guilty because people were hosting us and we would love to say, I'm gonna host you when you come to Italy, when you come to Belgium, but people cannot come here. And why not? Because they don't get visas because of their color and it's just bullshit it's mind-blowing this, this thing that people cannot just travel freely because a lot of people I met my age they don't want to come to Europe to stay here they just want to travel as I do to see something different to meet their friends or their family that live here already but they cannot and I had to call my mom and cry about it because it's not fair yeah, but what, what, what can you do about that? What I do about that? I, I don't know. I, Apart from crying. I don't know. I try to talk to people about it. I'm going to write invitation letters for my friend and try to get them to visit me. I hope in my lifetime I can do it. <laughs> I think the fear is that when people come here, they they're not going to go back. Here. Yeah, but then what? I also come to Bel came to Belgium and I never left. So what's the difference between me and other people? <laughs> Seriously. Like people like call, because I'm white and I come here, they call me expat. I'm a work migrant. That's what I am. I don't come from, from war because a lot of people come from war. They get rejected as well. A lot of people come from climate change because we feel it here, but people feel it more in Africa. And if it's for those reasons, then there's more reason to accept them. But if not, they should be able to be free like I am. To yeah, just go wherever they want. But Europe says we cannot allow everybody in because we don't have the resources to take care of everybody. Yeah, but Europe is taking resources from Africa. 
<laughs> They've been doing this for forever. Otherwise, Africa won't, won't live. Wow. Otherwise, African countries, there won't be countries probably, there would still be kingdoms and no borders. You know? Yeah, but we will still be primitive, fighting each other with spears and bows and arrows. Well, Europeans are, are fighting as well, you know? It's just, <laughs> I don't know, I, I, all these things are bullshit, you yeah. know? It's just, what these things that we, we came there and we gave education and, I mean, some things, yes, probably, some things were good, but... The education is to tell us you, we are better than you. Exactly. That's not also, education. Also, education, it's still a huge problem because the language in a lot of countries is either French or English. So kids go to school and they cannot speak perfect French or perfect English and they get education in languages that are not the languages that they speak at home. So of course the level of education is always going to be lower. And I understand it's very difficult because there's tons of languages in every country in Africa. I met people speaking 28 languages. Like, seriously, it's crazy. So I understand it's difficult, but I think that needs to switch as well. I think Senegal, they wanted to, they were thinking about changing like primary education in all of, um, so that like little kids can start learning in their own language and not in the language of the colonizers. Little by little, like detaching, I think it's going to be a very long process, but... This is Fermi Shuewu, and we are on the African Narrative Podcast in rounding up. What would you like to say, one, to European people, and two, to the European leaders about Africa? Uh, oh my God, uh, this is something <laughs> I have to think about. I think to the politicians, the, the migration policies needs to change. I am sick, sick of seeing people dying in the Mediterranean Sea. Um, being, I mean, we're giving money to Libya government to shoot people at sea. That's, that's really not okay. So the migration policies need to change to start with and the visa process needs to be easier. Also people, once they're here, they need to get their papers fast so they can work and be part of society. I know someone being here for like 10, 20 years without papers, it's just, it's nonsense. And to people in Europe, travel to Africa, meet people, meet, meet people, see with your eyes, don't believe the news, don't watch the news. <laughs> Don't watch the good news. Um, yeah, and don't be racist. <laughs> don't be scared of something you don't know. Talk to people. That's, yeah, I think that's everything that comes up very fast now in my mind. I hope I'm going to bring some friends and family to Africa during the years because I'm going to go back every year because I want people to see with their own eyes what is happening. Thank you very much, Sarah. You can only get different perspectives when you talk to people, when you've met the people you are talking about. Uh, a lot of times what we do is we talk over people, we talk about people, but we don't talk with people. And most of the time when we talk with people, Sometimes our preconceptions get confirmed, but most of the time, everything we thought we knew gets a little bit changed. I think that's what we can take from what Sarah has been telling us. Meet people before you form an opinion. Is that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. This is Femi Shuewu with the Africa Narrative Podcast from Africa Web TV. Stay tuned. We're still going to continue with our free styling today. Thank you. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Yeah. I'm a king. Yes, I'm a king. I think. 
I'm a king.